Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. In this world, there are interested people. This isn't new. Believe it or not, it's possible that your partner is with you only because you have a good salary and you think that he's with you for love when he's not. So how do you know if the person who claims to love you is with you because she really loves you? The fact that you'll see below is very popular in Eastern Europe. It happened in the Czech Republic, more specifically in Prague. This is the sad story of a wealthy man. My name is Benjamin. My friends just call me Ben. I am the heir to a well-known restaurant chain in the capital. From a very young age, I was forced to control everything my father said. He passed away, so I was left in charge of absolutely everything. My mother was abroad. She didn't live with us for a long time. You see, since I was a child, I realized that mom was with dad just for his money. When he became ill, she saw an opportunity to separate from him. She got divorced and took half of his shares. Now she married another man. In fact, she's never took care of me. Everything was done by my nana. I was an only child, and believe me, it's very unpleasant not being able to have someone by your side to keep you company when you need it. In high school, I met a very pretty girl. I saw her, and I really liked her. I knew that she came from another country. Her name is Katerina. We became very good friends and finally fell in love. She had moved to Prague from Moldova. Her parents had come to the country in search of work. Well, maybe you wonder what the son of a millionaire does studying in a state school instead of a private one. Let me remind you that my parents never cared about me. They spent so much time in their jobs that the only person looking out for me was my nanny. She was like my tutor, and she put me in the same school as her granddaughter. So she was there. After finishing high school, Katerina asked me for a big favor to help her pay for her studies at university. Her parents had returned to Moldova, and her grandmother was in poor health. So she was practically alone. She insisted that her parents stay here to study and work, she promised to pay me back as soon as possible. So I immediately told them that, yes, there was no problem. We look for the best university. She didn't want to because she knew it would be very expensive, but I insisted. She was happy that she would fulfill her dream of being a professional. I, of course, chose a career in business administration. I wanted my father to see great support in me, for him to feel happy because very soon he'll have a right hand. I wanted him to be proud. However, everything got complicated when he was diagnosed with a rare, incurable disease, and in a few months, he lost the battle of his life. For a long time, I suffered the loss of him, but hey, he had to move on. Now I not only had to study at the university, but I had to take care of my father's business. It was even more difficult. There were things he didn't know how to do. Luckily, Katerina was always there to support me. After finishing my degree, Katerina wanted to return the money I gave her to pay for her studies. I told her it didn't matter anymore. Also, she helped me a lot in the business that I couldn't charge her anything. She understood. She later told me that she would like to study a master's degree in Spain, but that she didn't have the necessary resources to support herself there. She confessed to me that the money that she wanted to return to me, she was going to use for the trip, for the registration and meals for a few months, but that she was probably not going to reach it. She also needed a student visa and must have a good economy in her bank account. She asked me if I could help her with money. A friend at work overheard and said, Hey, be careful. I'm not going to be with you just out of interest. I looked at my friend. I just didn't say anything to him. And when I got home, I thought, This reminded me of mom. But I don't think Katerina's like my mother. She's very different. At that moment, I remembered that she never turned me down on any expensive gifts or invitations from fancy restaurants. But no, I don't think she was capable of this. She's not an interested party. So, I gave her the money. I helped her with the visa. She always called to see how she was doing. Due to her business, I couldn't go to see her, so I paid for her passage so that she could come to Prague. She once asked me for more money. She told me that she would return it to me as soon as possible. I believed. However, one day in the afternoon, I received a call from Mom. I don't know how she knew it, but she told me, Be careful with that woman. Don't be naive. I told her not to meddle in my business. Besides, who was she to talk to me like that? 
For the next few days, I kept thinking about this and had a plan to find out if Katerina was interested in me or my fortune. The only way to know was to make her believe that I'd lost everything. After two years, she'd finally returned from Spain to stay with me. So before she traveled, I confessed to her that I was bankrupt. I heard a great silence on the phone. I wanted to know what she was saying. Then she only replied not to worry, that she'll be with me soon, and that we will find a way to move forward. After that call, I noticed that she was no longer answering the phone. I was worried, but I thought she might be busy. However, after other ignored calls, I thought, how supposedly I don't have any money anymore? Does she no longer want anything to do with me? But I was adamant that she wasn't like that. Soon the day would come when she would return. I went to the airport. I looked across the screen that I knew she had landed. I was eager to see her. The minutes passed, but she didn't appear. An hour passed. Two hours. Three hours. Nothing. I dialed her cell phone and only her voicemail appeared. I started to get scared. Had Katerina been lying to me all these years? She was only on my side for my fortune? The days passed and I never heard from her again. She hadn't even entered her social networks. She wasn't responding to my messages. She was kind of missing. What if something happened to her? I asked myself. So I wanted to believe that there was something else. Travel to Spain. I contacted the university where she had her master's degree, and they told me that Katerina had finished with honors. Later, through a friend of hers, I learned that she was no longer in the country. She told me that she went to Moldova with her parents. That blew me away. She was definitely for my money. I wanted to claim her and tell her the truth about him. On the same day, I searched the Internet for a direct flight to Moldova. Luckily, I knew her home address, so I traveled. I arrived the next day in the morning. I boarded a taxi, and it took me to a small town that was near the capital. At that moment, I just wanted to hear from Katerina. When I approached her house, I stood in front of her, and there she was in front of my eyes, through the window. But she was crying. I couldn't understand why she was crying. So I called out to her, Katerina, it's me. Open the door for me. Then she saw me and went out. When I opened the door, she handed me an envelope. There was the money that her parents had saved all that time to pay me back. She just said, I know you've put me to the test. I cannot be with a person who does not trust me. I'm so sorry, but forget about me. I was left watching them learn. No, Katerina, wait, don't do this to me. She replied, I won't tell you who told me, but I can't allow you to mistrust me like that. So many years with you and you don't even know me. Go away, please. I thank you infinitely for everything you did for me. I'll always remember it. And I'll be here in case you ever need help. But don't ask me to come back to you. We're done. She closed the door. I heard that sound, and to this day I carry it in my heart. The noise of heartbreak. Now that I think about it, as much as I have so much money, employees, cars, houses, suits, I'm totally unhappy. After a few years, I found out that Katerina married a man who's not even wealthy. They're already expecting a child. Now I understand, Dad. Not even money could do anything for him, and me either. And this is my story. I hope that it would be useful to someone, Benjamin finished. Without a doubt, a sad fact with a great message. And it's that mistrust and insecurity have always been the worst enemy in a relationship. When a person distrusts, he'll most certainly never be happy with his partner because there will always be discomfort. So they have to distrust their partner. It's preferable to talk about this in a reasonable way and please, that may be happening. And as I said at the beginning, there are very interested people, but there are also disinterested people who can live well without luxury. Remember that health, love, family, and affection are more important than money itself, since money comes and goes. Benjamin and his father are two different stories, but they share something in common. The money couldn't help them. I hope this video served for you. If so, please feel free to give us a thumbs up comment and share. By the way, I invite you to subscribe to this channel if you're not already and activate the notifications bell to receive the latest that we upload. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.